You know, you never, you never get over the first one, the first love. In this case, being the Audiophiliac Daily Show, your first hi-fi system. That's, that's powerful stuff. Because first of all, it's yours, right? And maybe you got it from your uncle or your friend at work or something, but usually it's when you're a kid, right? And you have your first hi-fi of some sort. Maybe it's a boom box. It doesn't matter. It's yours and you're playing your music. And it's just intense. You're jumping up and down, you're dancing, you're making your moves, whatever it is, but you're into it and it's fantastic. That's, you know, in retrospect, it's not that good a system or sound or whatever, but it didn't matter because it sounded better than whatever you had before. And that connection to your music was so powerful. It, it kind of, it surprised you how good it was, you know? So for me, <laughs> being the age that I am, yeah, when I played my, my Beatles records, especially the Beatles and the Stones, those two in the, in the mid 60s, wow, it was, it took the music to another place. I listened to John Lennon's double track vocals and was just fascinated by that stuff. So anyway, it was a system I got in high school. I think I've talked about it in other videos. And I got it at this uh, chain store called EJ Corvettes. Corvettes with a K. And uh, the speakers were Goldman speakers. Uh, they were actually UK speakers and this crappy little uh, integrated amplifier that was branded XAM, which was a Corvette's brand. It really humble stuff, a Garrard turntable. I have no idea what the cartridge was, but it was probably a Stanton or a, an Empire or something like that. But anyway, whatever it was, it sounded great to me. But being the audiophile that I was, I had to change it. I had to make it better. So whatever it was uh, that year or a little longer, I got a better speakers. I don't remember what they were and a better cartridge and definitely got rid of that XAM amplifier pretty fast. And I was on my way, and here I am, the audiophiliac, and a lot of stuff in between. But that first one, that first love is so strong. So I, I, I want to hear about yours. You know, what, did, what is it that, that put you over that threshold, that you weren't just an average person anymore listening to music as a it's a casual thing, but it became a bigger thing, a more important thing. What was that journey like for you? How did it start? Where did it come from? And how did it all come together? You read a review, or you, you, know, you were at a friend's, or you were at a store, and you heard something. Tell us about it. I mean, you know, it's funny. When I turn on the camera to make this video tonight, um, I didn't have any great ideas, to tell you the truth. I was... I had made a video and I was editing the video and I was like, this isn't good. I can't, I owe my viewers better than that. I, and I made it again, I shot it again. And I was editing the second version of this video that you will never see. And I thought, no, I, I can't put that out. It's just not that good. It's not, it doesn't have a structure. So this, <laughs> this is the good one. I know it's hard to imagine that this is bad, but seriously, Sometimes I just have to trash them, you know, that happens every now and then I just make video and sometimes I make it a couple of times and it's just not happening. It's just not, it doesn't that, meet that quality threshold that I strive for. You know, another thing, in searching around what to make a video about, I looked over and I saw this cover, this Monk record. Look at that cover, man. Is that stunning? <laughs> it's just just art, the art of it, but the, the beauty of it, the picture, the color, this red, oh my God. And it's Monk. Monk was the man for me when I was a kid. I just, I didn't know anything about jazz really, but Monk's music really took me to another place. It was one of those records I came home from school with my first hi-fi and played that right. It wasn't this one, it was Monk, Big Band, and Quartet. 
I didn't get this one actually until fairly recently, maybe three or four years ago. Somehow it slipped through the cracks. But cover art, you know, especially in those days, you'd buy a record and you would stare at the cover and then you'd read the liner notes. And, you know, remember liner notes? It was, it was a really big deal for a long time. Like, I want to know what, I want to know about this music. And the liner notes to varying degrees would uh, clue you in as to what was, what was it all about. So I bought many a record over my lifetime, CD or LP, because of the cover, because it just spoke to me. I would be at Tower Records, be walking down an aisle, and I'd see a, I'd see a cover. I'd go, what is that? And I'd pick it up, and I'd look at it, and I'd read the notes, if I could read the notes. Cover art is just not just decorative. It's a way of saying, check this out. Look at me. <laughs> this is good stuff. Come over here. I want to see. Yeah, and it works on me every time. You know, there was this record, there was this band called the Penguin Cafe Orchestra. So I'm trying to make it a decade. So maybe it was the, is the 90s or something, right? And I was, in a, I was in, a, in a record store on St. Mark's Place in Greenwich Village. And I saw this Penguin Cafe Orchestra. I put up the picture of what it looks like now. And I was like, Penguin? Wow, that's kind of weird, you know? But there was something about the covers of these Penguin Cafe Orchestra albums, but specifically this one. And I bought it. And I took it home. It was a dollar, by the way. It was a cutout. And it was a dollar. And I bought it. And I just flipped out. I just loved it. It's quirky, odd, musical. It's just, it's its, its own thing. So, you know, I'll try to link to something so you can hear it. But anyway, I love the record. And it was a buck, right? So a couple of days later, I go back and I bought, I don't know, 10 for $10. And I had this stack of Penguin Cafe Orchestra albums. And I was handing them out to my friends. <laughs> it's like, here it is check this out please it's it's a great and you know a lot of them said eh, it doesn't do anything for me but some of them it really connected and one of my friends uh it was a film editor and did a lot of commercials and stuff and i gave one to him and he loved it and he would use it as temporary music in in something he was working on and i think one commercial they wound up actually using the music in the commercials i guess they bought the rights to the music and they used it in a commercial and it was the but it was the cover <laughs> the cover that jumped out and spoke to me it was like there's something here there's something going on here just it still gets me every time so yeah this audiophile journey of ours takes a lot of different courses right the different roads to go down because you know it could happen at a live concert yeah you know sometimes you, you discover music at a concert right the opening act for a band you went to see the band but then the opening act was somebody you never heard of and it grabbed you it was like wow i really like that <laughs> you know i remember this band mark almond uh they opened for somebody at the film maurice and i was knocked out so i ran out and got their record at the time. And it was great. Or it was great then. It was one of those, it didn't, I don't think it's lasted for me. I, the impression of it faded over time. But it was an exciting thing. Now, I do this all the time now with my favorite radio station, internet radio station, FIP, French Public Radio. And they play the quirkiest sets. They go from opera to the Stooges to doo-wop. I mean, it's just all over the place and I love it. It's like free form radio taken to the next level. And I'm constantly finding new music. Oh, it's just incredible. So it's part of the journey. How do you maintain this focus, this passion over so many years, so many decades? Well, the foundation of it all really is the music. What else could it be? You know, the hi-fi, the audio, the speakers, they're just boxes, right? They're just a thing. It just sits there, right? But the magic of you turn it on, like that first hi-fi, yeah, you, that magic, you turn on, you see the tubes light up or you see the display come up. Yeah, you know, it, it's, um, well, the, the system is the vehicle. It takes you somewhere. It needs fuel. It needs music to do it, right? 
So <clears throat> you're, in a, you're in a space, a head space, right? And you put on the music, and then you're in another space. I wish I could use this picture. I just found it the other day on Facebook. This picture of Jack Nicholson, <clears throat> I guess in the early 70s, he has headphones on, he's home, he's playing records. I see the doors, on a stack of records on the floor, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And uh, he's in that zone. Jack Nicholson, Jack. He did it, man. He's just like us, or he was back then. And he's just got that look, that look of, of transportation, of being in the zone with that music, whatever it was that he was listening to. I don't want to use the picture because I'm sure it's copyright, copyrighted and I want to get sued. But it's a, it's a great picture. If you just Google Jack Nicholson listening to Hi-Fi with headphones or something, I'm sure you'll find it. Anyway... I think I've done it. I think I've said everything I can say right now. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And uh, if you dig it, please subscribe. Right now it's coming up four days a week, every other day pretty much. Uh, and if you really like it, check out my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash audiophiliac and what do we got we oh we have t-shirts you know i have t-shirts i have mugs i have a face mask that you can buy on teespring it's my merch uh, i'm not saying it's the greatest merch and it changes all the time so uh look at it i it's always linked to below oh and then this this shirt this shirt isn't the one i'm selling this is from a friend of mine noah lyon He's a local artist, a great artist, a really cool guy, and an audiophile. And um, he sells these shirts on his uh, webpage, and I will link to that for Noah. What else we got? We got playlists. We definitely have playlists. There's playlists for reviews of headphones and speakers and music and components. Right here. All right here. And, of course, interviews. Tons and tons of interviews. So yes, I think my work here is at last complete. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.